Dear students, welcome to my YouTube channel PCM Academy and today I will discuss about pseudo-force and when the pseudo-force will arise and how to apply the pseudo-force in problems. By using the concept of pseudo-force, we can solve many problems mainly on classical mechanics and actually when we are talk about in the chapter Newton's law, friction etc. So in, in this domain, this concept of pseudo force for solving problems, of course in circular motion, in whole the classical mechanics actually, the concept of pseudo force is very important. And when you will be familiar with this concept, then you can understand how important the concept is and how it is useful okay, for solving problems. So today I will discuss about this concept pseudo force. And you know this is the lecture series for J main and advance. Okay, and we have uh, discussed some important topics till now um, based on constraint equation. Probably last class I have discussed about constraint equation and some problems based on mass pulley system and wage constraints, etc. So today my topic is just pseudo force. Okay, so let me take some example and with the help of example, first I I like to understand about to let you understand about the pseudo force then i will also generalize this thing uh, according to your need okay because this is a very you can say this is uh, if, if you talk about in in your 10 plus 2 level then this is very simple but uh, uh, the coriolis force are also forces are in also included in in this domain that is pseudo force but i am not going to discuss about this kind of things there is a syllabus of B C on physics, but just I like to give you the concept of pseudo force in some particular system so that you can solve problems simply. Okay, and the most significant system you can say the motion of lift when the object is inside the lift. So I will start with the topics of motion of lift and I will repeat this concept again in the chapter circular motion. Okay, when I talk about the uh, centrifugal force and centripetal force then i will also uh, tell you this uh, about this pseudo force but before going to this concept this important concept or this very popular concept i like to give you some concept of frame of reference you might have studied the concept of frame of reference and a coordinate system like cartesian coordinate system cylindrical coordinate system plane polar coordinate system you might have familiar with this kinds of situation but the frame of reference that i am going to discuss here is actually from the physical property from the point of physical point of view you know these things some uh, mathematical aspects that is in terms of coordinate system but i like to give you some concepts about uh, the from the physical properties of, of a of a frame of reference okay and actually this pseudo force you know this uh, pseudo force is actually in the, not a real force okay so it is only arise in some particular uh, some particular frame of reference in mechanics you know the in role of uh, not only in mechanics but you know in physics actually in various branches of physics the frame of reference plays a very important role okay so we have to understand first about the frame of reference then i will tell you in which frame of reference the pseudo force will arise okay so before going to discuss more about pseudo force let me give you the concept of frame of reference from the physical point of view okay so in very basic sense you can say that frame of reference are of two types initially okay initially i can divide this frame of reference into two types one is the very familiar that is inertial frame of reference inertial frame of reference and the second one is non inertial okay non inertial frame second one is non inertial frame non inertial frame now this non inertial frame is very important actually 
though this non inertial frame can be of two types okay one is translatory and another is rotating rotating frame of reference i will discuss these things also so what is actually mean by inertial frame of reference inertial frame of reference is that kind of frame of reference which is at rest or in a constant motion constant velocity motion if there is motion but the motion is with constant velocity so you know about the what is actually mean by frame of reference frame of reference is a physical system you can say or a geometrical point you can say with respect to which we can locate a system any system it may be of motion of some particular object motion of a system of particles so it is frame of reference you can see you can say it is a system or maybe it is a point with respect to which we can analyze the motion of some other system or some other objects so that is why it is called the reference okay sometimes it, it, it will appear in the form of reference line sometimes it will appear in the form of reference point but actually what is meaning of this frame of reference is it is a geometrical point you can say or a system you can say with respect to which the other system is analyzed or in very fundamental you can you can say that frame of reference like let me take a two dimensional coordinate system if you take a two two dimensional coordinate system like this so this is x y two dimensional coordinate system and this is the origin so we can take this as a frame of reference and with respect to this origin this point we can locate another point p here and we can uh, say that the position factor of p with respect to o is r now if the point is moving in any in any sense if the point is moving then we can analyze the motion of this point or maybe here is a particle or a system of particle and the motion of this point or a point particle or a system of particles we can analyze with respect to this point and all the physical quantity or the dynamical variable involving of the point involving with the point point particle p we have to analyze with respect to some points or some systems or some frame that is called actually frame of reference so this is but this frame of reference may be at rest this frame of reference may be at rest or may be at constant motion may be with motion with an acceleration maybe this frame of reference is accelerated and you can get the physical example also like uh, you are in a bus okay if you are in a bus you are in a bus okay or on any car and if you locate some particles like some particles here also maybe from the you can see uh, some other bus or some other car from your bus so if you are in a bus and if you are looking some other objects from this bus then in that case you are interested to locate the system or you can study the other system with respect to bus maybe there is a passenger on the bus stand and you are looking at the passenger or there is a tree outside or there is some moving object in outside so you actually looking all the thing from the bus and the bus may be at rest the bus may be with velocity a constant velocity v or with a acceleration may be moving with an acceleration a and if i choose the coordinate system in the bus then this coordinate system or this frame of reference may be at rest may be with with some constant moving with some constant velocity or may be accelerated so these three possible cases are there and with respect to that we can divide the frame of reference mainly into two categories so one is if acceleration is zero and another is if acceleration is not equal to zero so you know the three possible cases are included here if a is equal to zero it means v is equal to constant if v is equal to constant you know divided it is equal to zero that is acceleration is equal to zero 
एंड इट इज ऑल्सो पॉसिबल दैट भी इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो भी इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट और भी इज इक्वल टू जीरो दिस टू पॉसिबल केस इज टेकन केयर बाय दिस इक्वेशन ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो एंड द अदर केस यू कैन से व्हेन ए नॉट इज इक्वल टू जीरो दैट मींस भी नॉट इज इक्वल टू कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज द एक्सिलरेटेड मोशन सो इफ द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस इट सेल्फ इज मूविंग विथ सम एक्सिलरेशन then we call this frame of reference as a non inertial frame of reference and if this is moving with a constant velocity v or is at rest then we call it at inertial frame of reference and you know that all the newton's laws are valid in inertial frame of reference i will discuss this thing more later on i will actually discuss compar comparatively this newton's three laws in the last lecture okay In the last lecture of Newton's law, I will discuss the comparison, the comparison discussion about these three laws. Okay, this is better to you because the very fundamental things about these laws you already know. But I like to analyze these three law in a single lecture. And when you have the concepts that I am going to discuss here, or I have already discussed earlier, all the concepts when you have in your mind. and if you analyze this three law comparatively then that is more interesting to you and the uh, that that will that will be more understandable also okay so i will discuss this thing in the last lecture but now it is sufficient to say that all the newton's laws are valid only in inertial frame of reference and what what we call or what we mean as inertial frame of reference means simply a is equal to zero you can say and here you can say that the frame of reference have a not is equal to zero that means it is in excellence okay so this two are basic condition about the inertial frame of reference and non inertial frame of reference and the acceleration is of the frame itself this is very interesting and now this non inertial frame can also be categorized into two types you can divide it into two types that one is translatory motion that the frame is in translational motion translatory and another is rotating frame you can say a rotating frame okay but that is an acceleration of course translatory frame may be of with constant acceleration may be of uh, acceleration zero then if the translatory frame has acceleration zero then it will convert into inertial frame of reference but a rotating frame cannot have zero acceleration okay it always have a certain kind of acceleration called centrifugal acceleration i will tell later on on the chapter circular motion about this centri about this rotating frame but in non inertial frame in this chapter in newton's law i am interested about this portion that is when the frame is in translatory motion suppose this is a frame of reference and this frame of reference is with translational motion with some acceleration a then it is non inertial frame maybe this frame is rotating with some axis here is x dash some later time here is y dash here is z dash maybe at an angle theta it can rotate with a fixed origin and here i like to discuss that the when the frame is translatory the motion of the frame is translational motion maybe along x axis maybe along y axis maybe along germ or maybe along a general direction r but it has no rotational motion only translatory motion so we are interested about only this part when the frame is motion frame is in motion with an acceleration and of course the motion is translatory motion then also the pseudo force arises so the pseudo force only arises in non inertial frame of reference actually this is not actually arises we have to consider a force to understand the equation of motion because in this frame you know the newton's equation of motions are not valid so the newton's laws of are only valid in inertial frame of reference but if you understand the equation of motion in non inertial frame also then you have to consider or you have to assume some force with certain rules and that force is known as pseudo force 
and that force is arises in translatory non inertial frame as well as in rotating non inertial frame also in different form but in this class i am interest i i am going to discuss about the pseudo force when it is arising in the frame of non inertial frame of reference obviously but the non inertial frame of reference is moving with an acceleration with translatory motion okay so my aim is very clear so we have to discuss about the translatory motion that is in the in, 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 in the frame of reference which is in translatory motion but with an acceleration obviously okay so let me choose some physical system first then i will tell you the actually mathematical formulation from this kind of conventional uh, rotating uh, conventional you know coordinate system with the conventional coordinate system i can derive a general result but i am not going to this process i will conclude this later on okay in the later part but first i like to analyze you with the help of some example and the very interesting and the popular example you can say that is the lift itself a non inertial frame you know lift is moving upwards or downwards with some acceleration so when a object is within the lift or a person is within the lift and if he wants to analyze the motion of some objects inside the lift or if you want to write down the equation of motion inside from inside the lift then you are in a non inertial frame because the lift is moving either upward direction with an acceleration or downward direction with an acceleration and we can only assume the lift as non inertial frame of reference when it is with an acceleration in upward direction or in downward direction okay so let me take a translatory non inertial frame as a lift okay so then we will come to the conclusion that what is the form of pseudo force in translatory rotating frame okay so let me take the example so first let me take a lift motion of lift so this is very popular example and you will be understand easily what pseudo force actually is so let me take this is a lift okay and here is a mass m and a person who is in the lift want to write down the equation of motion of mass small m so first if you want to write down the equation of motion from the ground that we have already done so let me first write down the equation of motion equation of motion from ground that is obviously a inertial frame so this ground is obviously a inertial frame but this is a non inertial frame so if you see the object from a ground that is from inertial frame of reference why it is inertial this is rest ground is taken as rest and this is so this is at inertial frame so if you talk about in broader sense then the earth itself a rotating frame so it is a non inertial frame but for this case we can assume that the earth is at rest and the lift is moving with an acceleration a upward in upward direction in upward direction so now if we analyze the motion from the ground what we like to say this is a force in which is acting upward direction and the mass mg here and the equation of motion of this object from the ground will be nothing but the newton's equation that is summation if y you can say along the y axis is equal to mass into acceleration along the y axis and that is obviously n minus mg is equal to ma so n will be mg plus ma this is the outcome you know okay so we know that the normal reaction is greater than our actual weight in amount ma of amount ma so we feel ourselves heavier when the lift will moving upwards this is already you know and i have analyzed this equation and motion to determine the normal reaction of this mass from the ground now what i am going to do i want to write down the equation and motion from the lift 
ओके सो दिस इज विद रेस्पेक्ट टू ग्राउंड विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू ग्राउंड नाउ इफ यू टॉक अबाउट विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू लिफ्ट देन व्हाट विल हैपन सो विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू लिफ्ट दिस पर्सन इज नॉट एवर अबाउट दिस एक्सपिलेशन दिस इज द प्रॉब्लम if when you are in lift you are not aware about this acceleration so the equation of motion that you are going to write is like this summation fy is equal to 0 and summation fy is nothing but n minus mg is equal to 0 and you will end up with n is equal to mg and your calculation will not match because you know that or you feel yourself heavier when the lift will moving will be moving in upward direction but from the equation of motion you will end up with n is equal to mg that means your weight is no longer changing so you can say that the newton's law or the outcome of newton's law is not valid in the non universal frame of reference because actually what we should get we should get this equation n is equal to mg plus ma but what we are getting is n is equal to mg this is only because of the fact that you are not aware about this acceleration of the acceleration of the frame you if you are in a lift okay and if you are if you you, you, you are not aware about any information of outside you cannot say that the lift is moving upwards or downwards okay so you can say only that lift is upwards or lift is downwards with the outcome of outcome of the normal reaction that you you know you are feeling heavier then you can conclude that i am in uh, upward direction and if you feel that i am uh, uh, lighter than my actual weight then you can say that i am moving downwards but that conclusion you can draw on only because of the fact that you know or you are aware about the newton's laws without any physics you cannot say without physics you cannot say inside the lift that you are in upward or in downward so in that case with respect to lift this equation is no longer valid or you can say in nonlinear self frame of reference newton's law is not valid or the outcome of the newton's law is not suited so what we have to do to match with this equation you can see that if summation fy is equal to 0 and if we take some extra force which is obviously opposite to the acceleration of the frame of reference if you take an extra force here ma in downward direction then what will be your equation of motion your equation of motion will be n minus mg माइनस एम एज इक्वल टू जीरो माइनस एम एज इक्वल टू जीरो बिकॉज यू कैन नॉट से दैट समय सेन एफ वाई इज इक्वल टू एम ए बिकॉज यू आर नॉट एवर अबाउट इट दिस एक्सेलरेशन बट यू कैन एज्यूम अ एक्स्ट्रा फोर्स व्हिच इज इन द डिरेक्शन अपोजिट टू द डिरेक्शन ऑफ द फ्रेम ऑफ रेफरेंस एंड इट कैन बी प्रूव्ड मैथमेटिकली बट इफ यू कैन सी हियर दैट इफ यू दिस फोर्स इज नॉट actually not acting on the mass m we are going to just assume this force to match with this equation this actual result that here should a force m a which is the mass of the object and the acceleration of the frame not the mass of the object not the acceleration of the object we are going to assume that there is an extra force m a where m is the mass of the object and a is the acceleration of the frame and this this force will must be will should acting i can say should acting on the object m such that this equation will valid or uh, uh, such that the result of this the result is will will match with this equation so you can say that n minus mg minus ma is equal to 0 and now we will end up with this equation n is equal to mg plus ma so this force that you assumed this ma 
and this MA is actually in opposite direction to the acceleration of the leaf. So you can write it like this minus MA in vector form is equal to 0. So this minus MA is nothing but the pseudo force is nothing but the pseudo force which we have just assumed in non-inner self frame of reference to match with the equation that is comes out coming out from the inner self frame of reference. So always in non-inner self frame of reference when you are going to solve problems with this or you are going to write down the equation of motion with respect to non-inner self frame then you have to assume some force acting on the object the magnitude of the force is mass of the object and acceleration of the frame, non inertial frame. But the direction will be always opposite to the direction of the frame of reference. Okay. And with this conclusion or with this result, if you want to solve problems, then it will be very easy for you. In some system, if you assume, if you, if you want to write down the equation of motion from the non inertial frame, then the problems will be so simple to you. You can understand when I will solve some problems. Now, let me discuss this thing again when the lift is in downward direction. Then what will happen? So you can always solve many problems, most of the problems with respect to inertial frame as well as with respect to non-inertial frame. But when you are solving the problems with respect to non-inertial frame, you should keep in mind that the force summation summation of force is always equal to zero but we have to assume in the summation of force a extra force which is acting on the object opposite to the acceleration of the frame of reference and the magnitude of the force will always be mass of the object and acceleration of the frame okay so with this concept let me go to the next example and I will prove also mathematically this thing later on. You can understand. But let me take some problems so that the thing will be very clear to you. Now, I like to solve this problem again when the lift, when the lift is moving in downward direction. Okay, with some acceleration. Eh? Again, this is a non inertial frame. So you can solve this problem two way. One with respect to ground. You can you can write down the equation from the ground or from the lift. So if you write down the equation with respect to ground, that will you will already know. You are aware about this thing. Till now I have solved all the problems with respect to ground, or you can say with respect to inertial frame of reference with respect to ground means with respect to inertial frame with respect to inertial frame okay so what are the forces acting one is the mg which is downward direction and another is the normal reaction which is in upward direction and again let me use that summation fy is equal to m into a y and what is the summation fy we have to take here the positive direction as downward direction because the acceleration is in downward direction i have told earlier that you always use the positive direction in the direction of acceleration so here what will be summation fy will be mg minus n is equal to mass into acceleration okay so n will be nothing but mg minus m now you can end up with the same result with respect to lift or you can say with respect to non inertial frame with respect to lift means with respect to non inertial frame non inertial frame now what we have to assume we have to forget this about this acceleration and we have to add a force mass into acceleration m into a where m is the mass of the object and a is the acceleration of the lift but the direction of the force will always be opposite to the direction of the frame that is the direction of the acceleration of the frame was downward direction so the pseudo force that will act on the object will be in upward direction and the magnitude will always be mass of the object and acceleration of the frame 
okay so you can forget now this about this and now if you want to write down the equation of motion you will already write down that if summation f y is equal to 0 then you will get again mg minus n minus m a is equal to 0 so you will get n is equal to mg minus m a so you can see that these two equations will give you the same result only when you take this force assume this force and this force is always college pseudo force okay and this is not a real force we have to assume this force to match with this equation okay and the benefit of this assumption you can understand when you solve some problems so each and every problems can be simplified or can be understand or can be solved by using these two methods okay now let me take another example another example okay you can see this example in many books and you can solve this example with these two concept sometimes the problem will be very simple only in non-inertial frame I will tell later on this kinds of complicated problem but first first uh, I like to give you the simple problems so that you can use the problems in two ways okay so let a train or bus a compartment of 10 you can say or a bus you can say and it is better if you assume this as a compartment of 10 and a pendulum is hanging from the ceiling or mass m now what will happen if this compartment will be moving with an acceleration a then this will be at this position suppose and at this position let me suppose that it is in equilibrium making an angle theta with the horizontal you are giving only the acceleration and you can take the gravitational acceleration g and what we have to find out what is theta so what are the forces acting on this mass in this position you can see here so if i draw separately this is theta and this is mass m so one force is obviously downward direction mg and another force is t okay t is not along this direction t is along the rope you know and it is always outwards from the object now these forces are not along the two perpendicular axis i have told earlier that you have to resolve the forces along these two, two direction if the forces are not already in these two direction so you can assume that mg is always in the uh, uh, mg is already in the negative y direction so you can choose a coordinate system here so if this angle is theta so this angle will obviously theta and this t now along this direction will be t cos theta and along this direction will be t sin theta okay now if you solve the problems with respect to ground this is the Three-way diagram actually with respect to ground. So with respect to ground, let me first analyze this problem. With respect to ground. Now with respect to ground, if you like to solve the problems, then you have to assume the acceleration of the object in this direction. And along vertical direction, there is no acceleration. So along vertical direction, it will be summation f y is equal to zero. So it will obviously t cos theta minus mg is equal to 0 or you can say t cos theta is equal to mg this may be our equation 1 and in the second case there is summation f x is equal to mass into acceleration along x direction and the acceleration is a and the only force that is along the x direction is t sin theta so it will be t sin theta is equal to ma this is our equation 2 now if we divide this two equation 1 and 2 2 by 1 if we divide 2 by 1 you will get 
टी साइन थीटा डिवाइड बाय टी कॉस थीटा इज इक्वल टू एम ए डिवाइड बाय एम जी ओके सो इट विल बी जस्ट ए बाय जी एंड यू कैन सी जी ली टेन थीटा इज इक्वल टू ए बाय जी सो थीटा विल बी इक्वल टू टेन इनवर्स ए बाय जी Now, if we solve this problems again with respect to ten or with respect to the compartment, so let me solve this problem now with respect to compartment, or you can say with respect to train. So now the frame of reference is non-linear cell frame. So what you have to add in the frame diagram that you have to forget about this acceleration and instead of this, you have to assume a force opposite to this acceleration. and the magnitude of this force is mass of the object and acceleration of the frame and now you will end up with this equation summation f y is equal to 0 it is obvious both the cases because there is no acceleration along this direction but this equation will now will now change how it will be change we have to write down summation f y is equal to f x is equal to 0 because within the non inertial frame You are not aware about the acceleration of this train or of this frame, so you have to use summation f x is equal to zero. And with this concept, you have to write down now t sine theta minus m a because it is in the negative x direction. So t sine theta minus m a is equal to zero, or t sine theta is equal to m a. So you should be very careful about this thing when you have to use this. Or when you have to use summation f x is equal to m a, so this is our now equation two. And if you again divide this two equation, you will end up with this same result that is tan theta is equal to a by g. So theta is equal to tan inverse a by g. Are you understanding about this concept? Now I will tell you why this is assumed like this. Mathematically, you can prove also it. Okay, so now let me prove mathematically the appearance of this pseudo force. Okay, so let me talk about mathematically. This is very interesting. I have shown you the application of pseudo force, and little bit you are understanding that why we are assuming that the direction of the pseudo force and magnitude of the pseudo force in such way. now i can prove this result okay so let me take a inertial frame of reference so let this is a inertial frame of reference with origin o x and y just and another frame which is moving with velocity v along this direction let me suppose this is x dash and y dash there is another frame of reference which is the origin o dash And which is at a, at 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 the location R with respect to capital R. Let me say it as capital R. Okay, with respect to the inner cell frame of reference. So you can say this is an S frame, and this can be treated as S dash frame. Okay, here S frame is what? S is inner cell frame. Okay, S is inner cell frame. Inner cell frame. And S dash is what we know as a non-inertial frame. Non-inertial frame. Okay. And the position vector of S dash with respect to S is nothing but R. Now let me take a point P over here. So let me assume a point P or a point particle at this location of mass m. of mass m and the position vector of this particle with respect to this non inertial frame let me take it as r dash okay and the position of the point with respect to this s frame or this inertial frame let me take it as small r this is capital r so what is small r 
स्मॉल r इज द पोजीशन फैक्टर ऑफ द पार्टिकल विद रिस्पेक्ट टू s फ्रेम दैट इज इनर्शियल फ्रेम एंड r डैश इज द पोजीशन फैक्टर ऑफ द पार्टिकल p विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द s डैश फ्रेम दैट इज नॉन इनर्शियल फ्रेम एंड r इज द पोजीशन फैक्टर ऑफ द नॉन इनर्शियल फ्रेम विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द इनर्शियल फ्रेम नाउ व्हाट इज द रिलेशन बिटवीन कैपिटल r स्मॉल r एंड r डैश यू नो फ्रॉम द वेक्टर ट्रायंगल लॉ दैट इज r प्लस r डैश इज इक्वल टू स्मॉल r you have this equation using the simple triangle rule that is r plus r dash is equal to r okay so now what i am going to find out the forces acting on the particle the forces acting on the particle with respect to non inertial frame okay with respect to non inertial frame what is the forces acting on the particle small m so to find out the force acting on the particle let me first find out the acceleration so what we have to do we have to just make differentiation of this equation so if we take differentiation twice that is d2r dt2 plus d2r dash upon d2 is equal to d2r vector upon d2 this is our equation This will be our equation. Now, what we have to find out what is the forces acting on the particle. That means we have to multiply with the mass, mass of the particle. That is, that will give you the mass into acceleration. So you can write it as m into d two r dt two plus m into d two r dash dt two is equal to m into d two r dt two. Now let me explain you all the term. Okay. So what this term is. This is actually m into d two r by d t two. There is mass into acceleration. What this term actually means? This is the mass of the particle. Please understand. Mass of the particle. And this is actually the acceleration of the frame, because the position vector capital R is the position vector of frame with respect to the inertial frame. So. when this capital r vary it means this non inertial frame varies and d2 r upon d2 is the acceleration of this frame because this is the position vector of this frame so this d2 r dt2 is nothing but the acceleration of the non inertial frame acceleration of the non inertial frame okay now what this m into d2 r dash dt2 is a you can see mass of the particle and this is what d2 r dash dt2 is the acceleration of the particle acceleration of the particle with respect to non inertial frame so this is the force mass into acceleration acting on the particle with respect to non inertial frame so this is the force you can see force acting on the particle force acting on the particle with respect to very carefully about this thing a non inertial frame of reference with respect to non inertial frame and what this is actually this is a force acting on the particle with respect to inertial frame of reference because this position vector is with respect to inertial frame why this is with respect to non inertial frame because this r dash is the position vector of the particle with respect to non inertial frame so the acceleration in terms of r dash this equation d2 r dash by dt2 means the acceleration of the particle because this is the location the position vector is particle so it is it is the acceleration of the particle so mass of the particle and the acceleration of the particle is nothing but the force acting on the particle but it is with respect to non inertial frame and here it is with respect to inertial frame of reference because this r vector is with respect to inertial frame of reference which is at rest or with at constant velocity so this m into d2 r dt2 is nothing but the force acting on the particle acting on the particle with respect to inertial frame inertial frame okay so if we now if we now want to write down this 
in more conventional symbol then what i can write over here is that this term that is m into d2 r upon dt2 this is the acceleration of the frame and you can relate when i am assuming the lift is in upward motion with an acceleration a this a is actually representing the acceleration of the non inertial frame so this d2 r dt2 is nothing but the acceleration of non inertial frame so we can denote this as a so let me take this as a so m into a vector plus you can write this as a force force acting on the particle with respect to non inertial frame so let me take it as f dash and that is equal to f let me take it as a f that is force acting on the particle with respect to inertial frame now what is our goal our goal is to find out the force on this particle with respect to non inertial non inertial frame of reference because we are interested to write down the equation of motion with respect to non inertial frame so what is the force acting on the particle with respect to non inertial frame, frame is just f dash so if we rearrange this equation you will get just from here that f dash is equal to f minus m in. that f dash is equal to f minus m and that is our required result actually what i am discussing from the very first okay that the force acting on the particle with respect to non inertial frame is nothing but the force all the force acting which are actually arises in the system plus some extra force that is minus ma it means that the force acting on the particle is opposite to the direction of the this negative sign actually implies that the direction of the pseudo force is opposite to the direction of the direction direction of the acceleration of the non inertial frame and its magnitude is mass of the particle and acceleration of the frame so this is finally we will get this relation in vector form and this is the most useful relation and you can conclude this as like this that f dash is equal to f vector plus f p vector and f p is nothing but the pseudo force which is minus m a okay but you know when when i am solving the problems then always i have taken the direction so no need of use the no need of use the sign when i am doing the free will diagram of mass m then one is n here and another is mg here and if the acceleration is in this direction then i am i am taking the force is in this direction so already i have given the direction so there is no need of use this minus sign because due to this minus sign i am drawing the force downward direction as the acceleration is upward direction similarly if acceleration is in downward direction then i have to draw the force in upward direction this is due to this negative sign so we, we we do not need actually to use the minus sign here okay due to this minus sign we have already this minus sign we have used already the significant of minus sign that it is opposite to the frame of the acceleration of the frame okay so this is the concept behind the pseudo force and i can i am also told you that i have also told you that what is the concept behind the pseudo force and how you can use this pseudo force in different problems okay next i will solve many problems okay problem sessions i will solve the problems from ic pharma dc pande from all the books okay later on but first my goal is to make you understand the theory completely with some examples okay with some not very difficult example but with some examples that the concept will be clear to you then i will move to problem session for each of the chapter after covering the lectures okay thank you